Hello, I'm Heather of HD Designs Crochet, HDDC. I'm a crochet designer and I sell my own patterns and I also teach new and aspiring designers how to publish their own patterns as well. So, welcome to a new studio vlog. How are you? I hope that you're tickety-boo. Things are pretty good for me. The summer's kicked in, it's here in full swing now, and I've got lots of creativity chasing me around with all the sunshine flowing. I've been working on two major projects. Project one is developing a design idea I've had in mind for a few years now. So who remembers this design? It's called Stella, and it was a granny square bag that I made. If you remember, I made this bag, which is called Stella, and it's the granny square bag, and it's got tassels, and I've put this chain on it, just to try it out, um, and I, I just love it, absolutely love it. It's what I want to be doing. It looks so good. It got shelved because it needed reinforcing in some way, so that it was a bit more sturdy. I got distracted by other projects, I got distracted by life, you know how it goes. Anyways, well, I picked it up again at like 3am, as you do, and then I got distracted again, but in a good way this time. I made a new bag inspired by Stella. So I've been hinting about this bag on Instagram and I've made some reels about it, showing some sneak peeks. So I'm going to show you them now. I am beyond happy with this new design. I am so, so pleased with the way it's developed. I have enjoyed every aspect of designing, creating, sourcing all of the hardware for it. And I think it looks absolutely amazing. It did come out larger than I expected. This is more like a satchel size and I was expecting to have more of a handbag size. So I'm actually part way through making a smaller version. Anyways, I've not actually revealed the smaller version yet, so make sure you're following me on Instagram so that you can see that when it gets posted. To make this bag, I got super busy with my sewing machine, which was really, really nice. And don't worry, if you don't like sewing, I'm working on a hack for you as well. But there's something really appealing about combining my interests of sewing, jewellery making and crochet. It just allows me to flex all of my craft I feel so, so inspired right now. So what do you think? And I know some people are always saying to me, why granny squares? And I literally say, why not? I'm so very fond of the humble granny square. It's an icon. I find it extremely satisfying to take a pile of scrap yarn and make magic from them. The granny square is so, so comforting. And look how amazing my handbag looks. You can style this in so many ways and I am so excited for hot girl summer. I am so excited for Granny Square Summer. Oh my gosh! <laughs> You've seen the reels. Now it's time to see it a little bit more up close. You know what I mean? 
Oh my goodness, don't you just love it? So I've actually swapped the handle out at the moment. Um, I purchased this handle for the smaller bag that I'm making and I wanted to dry it out. So this is my bag, which I revealed on social media, but I haven't revealed the name. So the name of this bag is Iconic. It is created using Granny Squares, my trademark. It's like my calling card, isn't it? They are three round Granny Squares. They are joined using the continuous join as you go method for each panel. Each panel, this is a panel, is then reinforced using um, some satin. It's not actually satin, it's like polyester, but imitation satin material and then it's got this stuff inside it which is ADA it's plastic canvas meshing and then I've created um, like a, a cover using the, the material you can see that's nice and shiny and then I have simply hand stitched each panel to the reinforcement panels that I've created it's then got a lock on it which I absolutely love. I wanted it to look like a real handbag. And then as you can see, it's fully lined. Fully lined, fully functioning bag. Um, I just absolutely love it. All the hardware, everything. I have sourced and I have linked in the pattern. I've made a full tutorial as well. So in between all the crochet and my second major project, which we'll get onto in a minute, I've been making sure to take a lot more movement breaks. A movement break can be walking, skipping, painting, weeding, playing with Albie, anything that gets you up off your butt and into motion. As a crochet designer and as a teacher, I spend a lot of my time sat on my butt crocheting, typing, editing and scrolling on the gram. I sit in some of the most weirdest positions, which I know aren't great for my skeleton. And I don't necessarily get my steps in anymore, especially thanks to the Panny D. I absolutely adore my job and it doesn't always feel like work. Sometimes hours will pass and my bum will be nut. My bum will be nut. <laughs> my bum will be numb. Or my elbow is mad at my crochet hook because I've literally not moved for hours and I've just been doing the same movement again and again and again. And especially now that I've rearranged my yarn room, I absolutely love it in here. I usually have fresh flowers on my desk and snacks I can listen to, a podcast, and it's just bliss. So now I intentionally take movement breaks and I find that I feel more energised and a whole lot less achy when I do. It helps me to get more done because when I'm sat down, I know that I'll be getting up for a break. So my time is finite and I have to get that work done. Otherwise, it's going to be a long day. And I found that my happy levels are topped up because I can spend 10 minutes guilt free, super soaking Albie or tending to my garden or moving on with a home project. And best of all, I'm more focused when I do sit down to work again. Some of the things that I have been really, really enjoying is, as I said, super soaking Albie. He absolutely loves playing with water. And so we have water fights, especially because the summer is here in full swing now. And we had 27 degree weather the other day, which that's a heat wave for the UK. Um, so playing with the super soaker is so much fun. And then he goes and lies down and just chills out, which is lovely. 
um, I love working on my garden. Anyone that was watching last year, you'll know that during the first lockdown, I really took to gardening and it's one of the first things I check in the morning. I come downstairs and I check to see how the garden's getting on. Hey tribe. So, welcome to my studio vlog. I am here in my yarn room. I absolutely love this space. Just look at all this goodness that you want to dive into. And look at all of this yarn. Oh. Recently gifted, recently gifted, hoarded. Oh, just so much good stuff. Anyways, I was gonna talk to you about something and I've forgotten. I'm putting these studio vlogs together because I wanted you to be able to see what it is that I do on a day to day, week to week, month by month basis and also just to track the growth of HDDC. Um, I know for some people that you might not necessarily know what goes into running your own brand or it might just be really interesting to watch. Um, I feel like if any of my family or friends ever watch this then they'll realise that I don't just sit and crochet all day long, like there is actually a lot that goes into this from social media to marketing to my launches to writing this, that, photography, everything, <laughs> so so much and crochet time isn't always that huge. Um, so sit back and enjoy and if you've got any suggestions and you want to see more, let me know. Another thing I've been doing is I've been spending more time at my dad's allotment, spending a lot more time doing some weeding, spending a lot more time watering the plants there and just being outside and being away from a screen. And also I spent a lot more time reading. And again, I know that's not necessarily movement, but it is something that I can do. I can take a book and sit outside. I can read whilst I'm eating my lunch. So as I said, I come back from my movement breaks and I am ready to crack on with my work. And my second project has been a lot of work, but it's so, so worth it. So my second major project is that I am rolling out updates on Workbook One. For anyone that doesn't quite, doesn't know yet, Workbook One is part one of the HGDC handbook for the crochet designer. I wrote Workbook One as many new and aspiring designers were asking how I transform my own design ideas into published patterns. And I realised that by teaching you how to do this, to publish patterns just the way I have, and it can help you live your dreams, it can set you free from your financial struggles, and of course, make sure there's even more crochet patterns out there for us all. So Workbook One teaches you how to size grade. What are all these crochet designers on about with size grading? What is that? Size grading is where you apply specific calculations to a base pattern, i.e. your design, so that your design can be made in sizes from extra small to five extra large and beyond and still have a consistent fit, shape and proportionality. I'm about to press launch. I'm about to let the updates go live. I wish I had this when I was starting designing last year and I'm honoured to be able to gift this to you. It's a great little community to be a part of and I'm really looking forward to seeing it grow and flourish as your patterns grow and flourish too. So right now Workbook One's at a reduced price. I've been holding off putting it to its full price so that as many people could get it as possible now. It will be full price from the 25th of June and at that point, I might even have a new pattern out, but that's for next time. Anybody that's already got Workbook One will receive the updates for their lifetime. You get free access. And the reason I've done that is because I wanted to always be able to provide a really generous resource to everybody. And as I evolve and learn and grow, I have got more and more that I can put into this resource. And so I wanted to pass that on as much as possible. There's also five supporting videos and one of the updates was also to record a welcome video. I wanted to take a moment to celebrate the start of your design career. So here, you can watch part of it now. This is your welcome video. 
three action points for you. Action point number one is to take a moment to celebrate. Take a second to pat yourself on the back, to do a little dance, celebrate the fact that you have started as a crochet designer. Mm -hmm. I'm so incredibly proud of each person who has purchased the workbook and I'm really humbled to be able to support you and encourage and teach you and so many others. There's an absolute huge wealth of talent out there and seeing the designs come through is, I can't even express how satisfying it is. One of the other updates that I did is to include checkpoints within the workbook. So the checkpoints are there to ensure that workbook one is really easy to navigate, is a lot quicker to use so that you'll see results a whole lot quicker because that's the important part. So if you could ask me one question about workbook one, what would it be? Leave that question below in the comments and I'll get back to you. And if it's a really juicy question, then I might even make it into a separate vlog. Okay tribe, it's time for me to take another movement break. I'm going to my dad's allotment for the next hour. So leave me your questions on workbook one for me to get back to. And thank you for stopping by. See you next time. Bye.